Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second video of my DHC2 Beaver remote control airplane build series. In the first video, I have made some good progress on the fuselage and the wings of the airplane. If you have not seen the first episode, I highly recommend you check it out before watching this one. I want to start this episode off by finishing the wings of the airplane. My first task will be to make the trailing edges of the wings out of this block of expanded polystyrene. I chose this material because it is easy to sculpt into these 3D shapes that would be impossible to make by bending sheets of foam, even though it does make a bit of a mess. After cutting it into its rough shape, I have glued the block of polystyrene to the end of the wing, and then proceeded with sculpting it into its final shape. After I was happy with it, I smoothed the entire surface with a bit of sanding. And there we have it. The next thing I wanted to work on was filling in this gap in the top surface of the wing. And I decided to do it using these strips of balsa wood. The only tricky bit was to create a suitable attachment point, but after I figured that out, it was simply a case of gluing them on. Now the top surface of the wing is nice and flush again. And of course, I have to do everything twice because we have two wings, but I won't bore you with that, so on to the next thing. And the next thing was to finally attach the wings to the fuselage. I have first made a few final adjustments to make sure that the two pieces will fit together and a few holes for cables and supports. The center section of the wing was attached using hot glue and a few wooden supports to make sure that it isn't going anywhere. Meet the absolute beast of a motor that will be powering this airplane. I will be using these pieces of wood to construct a very solid interface that will connect it to the rest of the airplane. For this I decided to use wood glue. The only disadvantage of this is that every connection needs several hours to dry before I can do the next one. So while waiting I started to solder up some of the electronics. And once everything was dry the motor was attached using four screws. For this airplane, I chose this low KV motor with a high diameter propeller. This should be a good option for a slow flying airplane. Now I started to prepare the fuselage to attach the motor assembly to it. I created these extra bits of foam with which I wanted to distribute the force along multiple paths. I've also realized that once I attach the engine, the inside of the fuselage will be much harder to access. I should therefore attach the landing gear now. From this point on, I've spent pretty much the next two days playing around with bits of metal and trying to figure out how to make a functional landing gear out of them. I did have trouble with landing gears breaking off in the past, so I did want to put in a fair bit of effort to make sure that this won't happen again. Preparing parts like these really takes a lot of time, but it's something I often leave out of my videos, as I don't think it's particularly interesting. So this time, here's at least a quick compilation. And done! Here are all the parts, ready to be assembled. I've designed the whole structure such that it comes together with screws and requires no glue whatsoever. This way it's also easier to fix if something breaks in the future. In any case, now I'm just hoping that it's strong enough to withstand a rough landing. And now I needed to figure out how on earth this structure is going to attach to the fuselage. First I have cut out these small holes through which the landing gear struts will come out. Then I went ahead and assembled the structure inside the fuselage. And trust me, 
This was easier said than done, as my hands could barely fit inside. I started to secure it in place by hot gluing it in a few key places. Then I added several layers of foam supports until I was confident that it was strong enough. Now that the landing gear is done, it's time to attach the engine. And since everything is already prepared, it's just a matter of gluing it on. Now that the engine is installed, I will focus on building up the front part of the fuselage around it. It's quite a complex three-dimensional part and again required a lot of planning. I have decided to build it in a way similar to the way I've built the fuselage of my DC-3. I have first made a skeleton, which was then covered in sheets of foam. And after trimming any excess bits, I was pretty happy with the result. This part, however, does need to house the engine, so I had to remove the inside of it and only leave the skin with a thin frame. It doesn't look great yet, but trust me, it will look better. First of all, I gave it an inside wall so that you can't see the structure inside. And in order to make the round leading edge of this part, I laminated several layers of the foam that will then be carved into its final shape. While the glue was drying, I started to round the edges of the fuselage. First, I have cut at a 45 degree angle using two rulers as a guide and then finished the edges off by eye. Once the glue was dry, I carved this part into its final shape as well. And at this point, I've also added a few extra ribs that will help support the windshield and the skin that comes in front of it. The ESC will also be hidden in this front section of the airplane, and the engine will hopefully provide it with enough cooling. After it was installed, I covered it up with this sheet of foam. And there we have it. The front section of the airplane is somewhat complete. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, then consider subscribing to this channel so you get notified when the next episode comes out. Also, let me know what you think about this build in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day!